Hi, this is Cheryl back with you from Farmhouse Frugally, and today I am joining Indy Annie Jones on this Flower Palooza. Make sure that you check out Annie's channel if you are not already following her. She is so fun and so incredibly talented and very theatrical. You are definitely going to want to check out her channel as well as the playlist in the description box. And I decided that I would like to show you three different ways to use florals. And so we are going to do a regular floral. We are going to do a transfer with florals. And we are going to do some decoupage with florals. So starting with the first item, if you are going to make a wreath, don't buy a grapevine wreath if vines grow near you. Go outside, pull some vines down, and wrap them into a wreath form. It is free and it is easy, much easier to do while they're young and pliable, but if they're not, you can soak them in water until they are pliable. Now, I am using some of this very strange stuff I got on Temu that said it was moss, but it is really fabric, almost yarn. It sticks to your fingers. It's really weird because <laughs> I want to use it up. So what I am doing is just cutting off a couple of chunks, and I am just gluing them onto the wreath in just areas to just give a pop of color in the background. You're not going to see this much, um, but I do think it's always good to layer. And then once I glue that in there, I just use that little cheap, uh, Dollar Tree, whatever that thing is, a scraper or whatever, and I sort of shove it down a little bit into the grapevine wreath. And I put three pieces of this just in random areas just to get some background color. You could certainly use any kind of dry moss. Uh, they sell plenty of different ones at the Dollar Tree. Or you could go outside and you could get some moss, but you do have to let it dry a bit um, before you can use it. So um, I generally keep some to dry, but it doesn't dry as brilliantly colored as these. So this is a good backdrop. Now I had picked up this stem uh, somewhere along the line and it was in my stash so I decided that I liked the color combination of this pink um, against that green so I'm just clipping off a couple of pieces and then I am just going to primarily stay uh, in the bottom three quarters of this wreath and I am going to just slide them in. Um, initially I was just going to keep them uh, on the wreath and not glue them in but I did decide later that I did want to, to glue at least some of the flowers in the stems. These are bendable but sometimes you just want to make it lay down and conform from the dollar store these little white fluffy white berries whatever they are and they had a little bit of a different deeper green so I wanted that uh, to pop off that as well once I had those on either side now I have my neutrals in place I wanted a little pop of a bit more color and I had these roses back from my Tamu haul ages ago and I am going to literally clip the roses off with pretty much no stem so that I can put them along the bottom and just give that a nice pop of color and it's always a great idea to work in three five seven always uneven numbers when you're making floral arrangements and wreaths Once these three are in place I had this little wooden happy Easter sign that I got at the Dollar Tree some time ago, but I can't remember. Nope, it wasn't. It was at Hobby Lobby, um, either on something or, you know, something at 90% off because that's pretty much the only time I ever shop at Hobby Lobby. And um, I actually like the happy Easter and I'm going to keep that because I could obviously use this wreath for Easter and then flip it because Easter obviously is a very short holiday season. So once I got the uh, tag off the back of this, um, I decided to keep that rope right on there because I am going to need a way to hang it. And then I am taking one of these transfers that I got on Amazon and this is the perfect coloring. It has a little bit of script and it has some beautiful florals. So I'm going to cut that out and I'm going to rub that on. Obviously it's a little bit too big, but I'll put on there whatever portion I can. 
and then I am going to attach that hanging from the top down into the center. And I know a lot of people are not bow people, uh, so you would want to add a little bit of something probably to cover that knot if you didn't want a bow. So you could add another couple of florals, or you could add a bird's nest, or you could add a bird house, or a bird. You can come up with any number of things, but I decided that I am going to make a very simple bow out of this pretty organza green. It's almost a shimmery green and pink ribbon that's in my stash. Literally, you are just going to make figure eight, figure eight, figure eight, figure eight, and you are going to pinch that in the center. And you are little by little going to make your figure eights sort of go a little bit toward the right and a little bit toward the left. You don't have to. You can fluff it all at the end, um, but I do find it if you can make it a little bit more shaped while you're holding it in your hand that that works very well and then once you have that done you are going to just take a piece of wire and twist that along the back leaving enough of a tail on that wire so that you can attach the whole thing where you want it on your wreath and I do like the contrast of the green and the pink picking up against this wreath it could use a neutral in the back so I could pop a little bit of white or cream or something as well and then with that excess tail I just make a little loop wrap the tail around it clip off the excess and now I have attached my wreath and made my loop out of one piece of wire. So that is it for a wreath as you probably have seen many 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 times um, but I did want to keep this uh, particular video fairly simple. I am running out of time to get it done um, but I do think that it came out really lovely. Here it is in my kitchen. I have a beautiful piece of furniture that has this gorgeous little door on it and I love to hang wreaths so I thought that it looked really pretty there against this wood tone. So I'd like to know what you think about this wreath. And then I am moving on to number two, and I am just using one of those Dollar Tree rounds. It cost me a dollar because I've had it in my stash for a long time. And I am going to sand off the letters because they are a little bit high. And then once I have that off and clean, I am going to give it two coats of the white chalked paint. Now I have used a number of different kinds of transfers. I've used the ones from Tamu. I've used the ones off of Amazon, um, Prima Redesign, IOD, all kinds of different transfers. And um, I love the look of IOD. I think they have the best quality as far as the look. But I have to be honest with you, as far as putting them on, they are a little bit more finicky. The Prima uh, re redesigned by Prima, I think probably goes on the easiest. You can catch an air bubble and lay the whole thing down in nothing flat, and I have never had those lift my paint. This one, uh, a number of times with the IOD I have, and I don't know if it's because I tend to use chalked paint, but I did spray this after it was dry with the Rust-Oleum two-time and let that fully dry before I put the transfer on. The florals went down pretty good. Took a little bit on the edges, which it tends to, um, but they did go down well. The words, however, were a whole nother story. So I'm going to tell you, if you have the time, let your paint sit a day or two before you put especially script onto any project if you're using these IOD. They're expensive and they're gorgeous and they're well worth the wait if you have the time uh, to do that. Now I didn't and I was a little bit concerned because I could tell that I was going to have um, potentially a little bit of trouble um, but since I had sprayed it I felt more confident than in the past. However I have to tell you no matter what I did I still only got probably two-thirds of the words on to this project. Even after I could see that it was lifting some of the letters, I let it stay overnight and I still was unable. So I tried to put a little bit of glue behind it and got a few of the letters to stick, um, but in general, not as good as I would have liked. So then I did go around with my sander and distress some of the uh, floral part of the transfer as well as over the words a little bit just to make this look a little bit more vintage. And then I took a little bit of the distressing ink. I didn't want this piece to look terribly distressed because I knew I was going to put some newer florals. So um, I didn't want it to look real old on the bottom and new on the top. But I did go around real quickly with a little bit of distress ink. And then I decided since the letters were procured 
precarious to go ahead and cover the entire thing with Mod Podge. I could have sprayed it again with the Rust-Oleum clear coat. You could put any number of clear coats over the top, but I had the Mod Podge right in front of me. So I did cover the entire thing with Mod Podge and wait for that to dry. And then once that entire thing is fully dry, I had a couple of these roses in this beautiful fall colors um, left over from my Temu haul last year. And uh, these were the perfect color. So I snipped it off and just kept a tiny little bit at the bottom so I could poke that and glue that right into the hole that was already at the top of this sign. And then I had these other little peachy colored florals that could have come from anywhere and I clipped off a couple of the leaves because they were looking like they were heading in the wrong direction. I and I glued a little bunch on either side of that rose and then filled in a couple of more where there was a little bit too much green showing and then just added a little twine loop to the back of this for hanging and that is it. And I absolutely love the combination of these flowers with the transfers um, and you know, the distressed look of the letters is okay given that I got the bulk of it to lay down. But again, if I did it again, I would certainly give it the time that it deserves to fully dry. I just added the hanger on the back and here it is. This is such a beautiful transformation for a dollar store round. I figure with the cost of the IOD transfers, which I think was somewhere around $30, you can probably get 15 projects easily out of that. It is called Lover of Flowers. So the projects are about $2 plus it was a dollar for the round and a couple bucks for the flowers. So probably a $5 transformation and I think it's lovely. Now, now I'm taking just a piece of scrap wood that I had in my stash. I have done the first project of florals with actual florals making a wreath and the second project out of an IOD transfer for flowers. And now this third one, just a piece of decoupage tissue paper. And I am just adding Mod Podge to this piece of wood adding the piece of tissue paper and then pressing that down and then using a Ziploc bag, I am just going to get the bulk of the wrinkles out. Once that was completely dry, I used my finger sander and just sanded the edges of the tissue paper off. And now I am going to frame this out with some rulers that I have in my stash that came from the hardware store ages ago. And I am just using my crocodile to crop those uh, where I need them. And then I am just going to hot glue them around the edges of this picture to frame that out, keeping everything in the neutral tones because I think that color is perfect for the background in the florals. Once I got the four pieces framing out the uh, florals, then I took in another ruler and I am going to just cut with my crocodile the perfect size for a little shelf to fit inside the bottom section of that frame. Then once I had the little shelf on there, I just used hot glue for this because what I'm putting on here literally doesn't weigh anything. I had picked up a ton of wooden little pieces at a um, thrift store and these little three pots happened to be in it. And there's a bag of about 40 items for five bucks. So they cost next to nothing. And they're also in that natural wood tone. So I thought that was perfect. And just glued those right to the shelf and pulled out this crazy supposed moss that's actually fabric. Filled each of the little pots first with that. And then at Hobby Lobby quite some time ago, I got one of those really pretty, it's almost like a baby's breath and greens um, garland for my mantle. So I snipped just a couple of little pieces because these pots are tiny from that garland and I filled those with that first and just glued those in. And then once I had that in there, I just took um, three little carnation looking flowers that I had in my stash that were in the right color tone for the back of that floral paper. What do you think about these three simple little floral 
things that we've made today. And I have 450 videos of all kinds of things, many vintage, many farmhouse, many cottage, ranging from very, very simple like today, all the way to intermediate, finished pieces of furniture, all different kinds of crafts. So I would love it if you would take a look. Please hit like and share and drop a comment to help my channel. Thanks so much for stopping by. I will see you in the next one. Take care.